And she said, Mama got a note here from the Harper Valley PTA. Well, the note said, Mrs. Johnson, you're wearing your dresses way too high. It's reported you've been drinking and running round with men and going wild. Secretary Harper Valley PTA Well, it happened that the PTA was gonna meet that very afternoon And they were sure surprised when Mrs. Johnson wore her miniskirt into the room And as she walked up to the blackboard I can still recall the words she had to say She said I'd like to address this meeting of the Harper Valley PTA. Well, there's Bobby Taylor sitting there and seven times he's asked me for a date. And Mrs. Taylor sure seems to use a lot of ice whenever he's away. And Mr. Baker, can you tell us why your secretary had to leave this town? Whitta Jones be told to keep her window shades off or completely down. Well, Mr. Harper couldn't be here cause he stayed too long at Kelly's bar again. And if you'll smell Shirley Thompson's breath, you'll find she's had a little nip of gin. And then you have the nerve to tell me you think that as a mother I'm not fit. No, I wouldn't put you on because it really did. It happened just this way. The day my mama socked it to the Harper Valley PTA. The day my mama socked it to the Harper Valley PTA.
That song really was thought definitely so from my mom. Because so none of us even no, ever heard we that. We didn't pick that song. <laughs> okay, well, you you just it is. It's, it's called My Angel, so I don't know. It's, I think... It wasn't that long. It was a little, like, three over three minutes, so it wasn't so bad. It just feels like it. So as we begin today, you know, I would like to ask everybody to either put your cell phones off or on vibrate in order to preserve the dignity of the service. And Pastor Justin will be officiating. He's the pastor at the Frankfurt Plains United Methodist Church. Pastor? As we begin, friends, I just want to offer my sincerest condolences on the loss of Eva. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and I am life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, yet shall they live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. I died and behold, I am alive forevermore. And I hold the keys of hell and death. Because I live, you also shall live. Friends, we have gathered here to praise God and to witness to our faith as we celebrate the life of Eva Ellen Gould. As in baptism, Eva put on Christ, so in Christ may Eva be clothed with glory. We come together in grief, acknowledging our human loss. May God grant us grace that in pain we may find comfort, in sorrow, hope, in death, resurrection. Eternal God, we praise you for the great company of all those who have finished their course in faith and now rest from their labor. We praise you for those dear to us whom we name in our hearts before you. Especially, we praise you for Eva, whom you have graciously received into your presence. To all these, grant your peace. Let perpetual light shine upon them and help us so to believe where we have not seen, that your presence may lead us through our years and bring us at last with them into the joy of your home, not made with hands, but eternal in the heavens, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Our first reading today will be from Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And from the Gospel, we have the Gospel of John, chapter 14, verses 1 through 4, 18 through 19, and 25 through 27. Jesus said, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and I will take you to myself, 
so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the play way to the place where I am going. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. I have said these things to you while I am still with you. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Friends, would you now pray with me as we go to the Lord for a message? Loving God, I thank you that you are here with us now and you're here with us always. Please, Lord, speak a word of comfort through me. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight. For you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Friends, again, please receive my sincerest condolences as we come together this morning to honor the life of Eva, a daughter, friend, companion, mother, grandmother, great great-grandmother, and first of all, child of God. Death is never easy. Jesus' victory over death provides the hope that it will not be eternal. And one day, death will be no more. But for now, it is still a reality. But in that reality, remember that you are not alone. Lean on each other. Lean on family and friends. And lean on our God, who promises never to leave us or forsake us. Even when we can take solace in knowing that Eva is at peace, free from the distresses and troubles of this world, because of the love she gave and the love you have for her, there is still a desire for at least another moment. While I can only imagine what each of you may be feeling, our God who is with us and is with Eva knows it intimately. The shortest verse of scripture, John 11:35, is Jesus wept. And he wept as you have done and will do in the time ahead because of his grief over someone dear to him who he lost. Jesus weeps with us. And know that God can handle the wide range of emotions that grief may bring. Sadness, anger, uncertainty and confusion. Whatever you may feel, for however long you may feel it, receive God's grace to do so. Freely bring all your feelings to God, and God will meet you with God's comforting presence and grace. Those emotions fully express bind us in relationship. They keep us bound with Eva and bind us with our Lord who knows them full well. I unfortunately did not have the chance to know Eva while she was here. But from the conversations I've had and the sentiments I've read, I can tell she was an amazing and cherished woman. I wish I could have met her because from what I learned, we had some common interests. I was excited to learn she was a big fan of space farms and Wild West City. Those were favorite childhood places of mine, so I can appreciate her passion for them. 
At Space Farms, I can remember strolling around with my family, looking at animals and exhibits, or at Wild West City, watching the reenactments and the stagecoaches, where usually some bandits would try to rob them. I learned she loved Christmas, Fourth of July, and Halloween. Times where one can have huge celebrations and share joy with family and friends in the community. She enjoyed attending fireworks at Skyland Stadium and participating in Trunk or Treat and Halloween Horror Fest at the fairgrounds. I'm encouraged in hearing of how people take time to enjoy celebrations during earthly life. While we don't know what heaven will be like, when we look at the earthly life of Jesus, the one who Eva can now feast, see face to face and the one whose sacrifice will enable us to see her face to face again, it's not a stretch to imagine even more grand celebrations. In the Gospel of John, Jesus' first miracle was turning water into wine. And the Gospels are fraught with accounts of Jesus routinely taking time for meals and fellowship. Jesus, who is God in flesh, gave us a sense of the nature of God, enjoyed having a good time, as Eva did. If Eva enjoyed those holidays while she was here, just imagine the joy she's experiencing in Jesus' presence. This morning we heard John's account of Jesus comforting and preparing his disciples in anticipation of his sacrificial death. Jesus reassuring them of their welfare under God's care by revealing the many rooms or dwelling places in God's house. As I thought about that heavenly mansion, from what I learned of Eva's life here, that image seemed very reflective of Eva's heart. A big heart with many rooms where others found a place of love and peace. Undoubtedly, the biggest rooms were her, for her family. She was a devoted mother to Heather, Christy, and Amber. A loving companion to Richard. Though perhaps the largest rooms were reserved for her grandchildren and great-grandchildren. She lovingly shared her wisdom and experience, was intent on putting others first. Eva had ample rooms in her heart for the wider community, especially 4-H, an organization dedicated to empowering and nurturing youths. I see within that passion a reflection of Christ our Savior, who likewise put a great emphasis on children. In Matthew 18, when asked by his disciples to declare the one who would be greatest in the kingdom of heaven, Matthew tells us, Jesus called a child whom he put among them. He said, truly I tell you, unless you change and become like children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Whoever becomes humble like a child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. While she was here, Eva fulfilled that greatly. What big smiles Jesus must have had then, and what warm embrace he must have for her now. Of course, the heart for a community extended to everyone notably to those who suffered in the midst of natural disasters. Perhaps some here have experienced firsthand the damage done through hurricanes or storms. If you recall the hardships you faced or the traumas and losses of property detailed through news reports amidst the increasing prevalence of natural disasters, it's not hard to recognize what a blessing Eva was for that. And there were also rooms in Eva's heart for the greater breadth of creation. Psalm 19.1 tells us, 
The heavens declare the glory of God, and the skies proclaim the work of his hands, which would have especially been highlighted during the 4th of July fireworks that Eva enjoyed. Psalm 148 calls on trees, the mountains, and fish to praise God. Maybe that chorus of praise is why Eva enjoyed fishing and camping so much. Scripture is adamant that all God has made is precious in God's sight. And that love of God was clearly evident in Eva. She delighted in driving around, always taking the long way so that she might see more of God's beautiful world. She cared for animals, something evident through her love of space farms, but also her beloved dog, Maria. I was especially struck when I learned about Maria as my family also recently lost a canine member. I know how energetic those dogs can be. They may be small, but they practically bust through doors when they know their owner is near. So it's not hard to picture Maria seemingly breaking down heaven's gates upon seeing her master come home. While I did not know Eva here, I can appreciate her passions. I praise God for what a loving soul she was and how she blessed the world and community. And I can see the presence of God's Spirit within her. As one marked by the Holy Spirit, there is the assurance that she is safe in Jesus' care, enjoying the eternal life that Jesus died and rose to bring all who would receive God's grace. Because of the hope we have in Jesus, we can know that one day we will see her again face to face. While we are marking the end of Eva's life here, we are also starting a new beginning, which Eva will continue to be a part of as she is remembered in our hearts, as we encourage and support one another, seeking to live in ways which honor her memory and build on the way she taught and modeled. Though it's painful now, through God's ever-present grace and memories of Eva, know that you too will find comfort. As we move forward, we have the sure promise that God is with us, that God is unceasingly working to restore creation to the wholeness it had at the beginning. One day, together with Eva and all our departed loved ones. Because of the eternal life and forgiveness we have through Jesus, we will be reunited in that beautiful, multi-roomed, heavenly home to enjoy eternal life in God's presence. And to close out this message, I just want to share this poem which Heather shared with me and I just invite you to allow God's grace to come to you as I read it. I watch you every day. I am always near. I know deep in your heart you realize I'm here. I watch you while you sleep, in your bed at home. I hear you when you speak to me, when you're on your own. You cannot understand the reason why I've gone. But I will never leave you. I'm there to keep you strong. Talk to me. I hear you, though you may not see. We share an unbroken bond that will always be. Death will not keep us apart, for our love is forever. Just remember me in your heart, and one day we'll be together. Live your life and live it full. Don't waste a single day. Remember, I am always with you every step of the way. Amen. And I would just invite the family to play your next song if you would.
Let us pray, friends. God of us all, your love never ends. When all else fails, you still are God. We pray to you for one another in our need and for all anywhere who mourn with us this day. To those who doubt, give light. To those who are weak, strength. To all who have sinned, mercy. To all who sorrow, your peace. Keep true in us the love with which we hold one another. In all our ways we trust you. And to you, with your church on earth and in heaven, we offer honor and glory now and forever. Amen. This body we commit to the ground. Earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Almighty God, into your hands we commend your daughter Eva. In sure and certain hope of resurrection to eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Eternal God, you have shared with us the life of Eva. Before she was ours, she is yours. 
for all that she has given us to make us what we are, for that of her which lives and grows in each of us, and for her life that in your love will never end, we give you thanks. As now we offer Eva back into your arms, comfort us in our loneliness, strengthen us in our weakness, and give us courage to face the future unafraid. Draw those of us who remain in this life closer to one another. Make us faithful to serve one another and give us to know the peace and joy which is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And now I just invite you to join me in the Lord's Prayer, the Our Father, according to the tradition that you are most familiar with it. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now friends, as we as our service draws to a close, please receive this blessing. Now to the one who is able to keep you from falling and to make you stand without blemish in the presence of God's glory with rejoicing, to the only God, our Savior, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, be glory, majesty, power, and authority before all time, now and forever. Amen. Friends, our service is now drawn to a close. I invite you to please go forth, full with the spirit of Jesus and memories of Eva, and love and serve as she would. Amen. We all know Eva was very integral in the 4-H, and we do have a representative here from 4-H that would like to say a few words. So I invite you up. <laughs> without getting into an accident. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> thanks. Um, I'm Dave Ford. I coordinate the 4-H program here in Sussex County. And I came to know Eva as a volunteer in our program. Eva came to me, came to us with an idea of, you know, she wanted to help. Eva always wanted to help. And the fact that it was helping kids made it that much more important to her. Um, and so, Eva's role in 4-H was to go out and get donations. And I just so admire her persistence and her dedication to that. Um, I, I know you all know Eva, so you can probably imagine pretty easily how she approached this. She, <laughs> Eva would call me up many times to find out, you know, when we had raffle tickets or when we were going to start collecting for this event. And she would figure out, okay, when can we go to Dale's? When can we go to ShopRite and Walmart? And she'd have every store mapped out when she was going to be there, when Rich or Hope were going to, you know, get her over there and, you know, ask people to help and support the program. Um, I, I just so admire how she was able to do that all the time. And I know a lot of times when she would go out for donations, people were not always kind and receptive but that never deterred Eva. She would just go on to the next door and get a donation and just keep going. And I just love that she did that. Um, you mentioned uh, the Halloween events, and I know that Halloween Happenings was an event we did at the fairgrounds, and Eva loved that. Um, she loved collecting all the, the paraphernalia and stuff to put up and then coming to the event and seeing the kids in costume and having a good time. Um, you know, it was just kind of infectious to see how much fun they were having and she was having watching them. It was, it was just a wonderful thing. Um, you know, it, it, was, it was always fun to, to you know, I, I knew Eva would be on the phone to me, you know, pretty much the minute tickets got, came off the press because she wanted to help and she would be there and put so much time into helping us. Sometimes three months in advance? Excuse me? Sometimes three months in advance she was asking. Yes, yet she, 
he, he was always checking in to make sure, you know, she was ready to go whenever we had stuff ready to, to happen. So um, she was very dedicated to 4-H and, and mostly to the kids. And I, I appreciate that. And I'm, I'm going to miss her. Uh, and I'm grateful to have been invited here to, to say a few words about her. So thank you. And um, I, I share your loss for Eva. Um, but I'm comforted thinking of all the, the great memories I have of her and the great things that she did for 4-H and for kids in our county. So thank you. Thank you. Pastor, Eva's family would like to sincerely thank you for your prayers and words of comfort. And thank Mr. You. Ford, the family would also like to thank you for the personal sentiments that you added today for the service. They would also like to thank each and every one of you for being here today. They would like to thank the gentlemen who served as pallbearers as well. It means a great deal to do that for Grandma. I know she's smiling down. You feel the sun? Feels good, doesn't it? <laughs> she that almost didn't make it. I wasn't. I gotta make a detour to the gas station. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna ask you if you gassed up. <laughs> <laughs> But today, we're here. It's been a journey, definitely been a journey. And I'm going to read a poem. It's called, I'm There Inside Your Heart. And I do believe Mom would appreciate this. Right now, I'm in a different place. And though we seem far apart, I'm closer than I ever was. I'm there inside your heart. I'm with you when you greet each day and when the sun shines bright. I'm there to share the sunsets too. I'm with you every night. I'm with you when the time is good to share a laugh or two. And if a tear should start to fall, I'll still be there for you. And when that day arrives that we're no longer apart, I'll smile and hold you close to me forever in your heart. She will forever be in your heart. The memories will always be there. So I hope you can cherish, keep her memory alive, and also, remember, today, the sun shining. It really, when you feel it on the back, it tells you she's okay. I do feel she's at peace. I feel her journey here on life is over. But her journey is just beginning now. And you will again be able to be reunited with her. So I'm going to ask Luna to come up. I know everybody here has gotten a flower. So as we place the flower, on Grandma's casket, I'm going to ask you to play the last song, and everybody can proceed up to put the flower on her casket. Sincere thank you for everyone being here today. Thank you. <laughs> 